<laughs> All right, Con continue building shapes. It's good to know what shapes are mine and what are from the reference layer. So I'll turn off my reference layers. And this is what I have. And even just that simple combination is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different vectors. Just like stacks of paper on top of each other, all cut out. So to continue, I'm kind of getting beyond the helpfulness of, of my template. But I do like this, this kind of mouth, and I do like the little drool. So let me do the mouth first. And this is a different kind of shape. I know I want it to be pointy on one end. So far, I've only used ellipses. So now let's look at some of these other shapes. I'm going to go to the triangle tool, which is funny. They've added this in in newer versions of Photoshop because you really only need the polygon tool because the polygon tool under its preferences allows you to make any sided polygon you want. So if you just put three in there, you get a triangle. But I think they got enough letters saying, why don't you just make a shortcut to the triangle? And so there you go. Shortcut to the triangle. And why is a triangle useful? Well, that will give me kind of a point, right? And then I can hit return, hit command T, and I can play with scaling it. If I hold down shift, I can distort it, right? And get kind of a mouth shape. Maybe something like that. Then I hit return, command T, right click within it and warp it. And now I'll zoom in. This is how, where a polygon or a triangle has only anchors and then straight lines between the anchors. So those are straight vector paths. By warping, I can immediately turn those straight paths into curves just by bending them a little bit. I try to be careful not to do this. In this instance, it's kind of cool looking. Actually, I kind of like it. But I try not to bend the, uh, the warp on top of itself because then it can get really confusing how to make it what you want. So you see how that, I'm like turning the back of it over. So instead, I just slowly curve it. And then when I feel it's too much, I go to another side and I work it from that side. So this is just to get kind of a very simple kind of smile shape. A little lopsided because it's cute. And then hit return. Okay, so I just made that, that uh, mouth shape. Now if I want to give it a slight upward curl, I can just transform it one more time and warp it. And then pick it up on this side. But I kind of like it less happy looking. I don't know what that says about me. I like my dogs a little ambivalent. Now I want the drool. Now this drool looks like such a simple shape. This is a shape in Illustrator that's called a rounded rectangle. It is a pretty simple shape. But in Photoshop, they used to have a rounded rectangle tool. They no longer do. So you have to be a little bit creative sometimes. If I use a regular rectangle, which I haven't used in this demo yet, I can kind of do this block, right? And then let's fill it in with the color and let's steal that color directly. And then how do I get these rounded corners? This is something that's really cool about vector shapes when they are straight shapes, especially rectangles or squares. You'll get what's called the rounded corner kind of shortcut. It's this little floating circle inside the corner. And if I just click on it, and drag down, it will round all the corners equally unless I set it to do something else. And make sure you have your stroke turned off. For some reason, mine's turned on, maybe because it's the first time I've used a rectangle. And notice that that works really well at the top, but doesn't work so well here. So instead, I'm going to shorten it 
to there. And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. And then shorten it like this and then extend it. And then maybe round that a little bit more. That's the most you can round it where the points meet. And then you have, you know, a circular edge. Then I can duplicate that. So how do you make what are called compound paths in the way we're doing it? We're just going to layer the same color on top of itself, right? And I can stretch this. Command T. Hold down Shift. Stretch it down. So that drool is dripping. And then I might go back to my big vector shape, Command T, and I might tighten it up. Whoops, hold down Shift. And you see it will tell me when it lines up. Good. Now I can take that whole thing. Let's see, where am I? There we go. So I've got this layer, this layer, and I'll show you the outlines, this layer and this layer. These are all shape layers. All three of them are making that one shape. What if I want to grow all of them together so it's big enough it goes beyond the side of his jaw? Without rasterizing, I hold down Command or Shift, and I select all three of them, and I'll see all those, those paths. And then I can hit Command-T. And then I can grow them all together, like so. Or rotate them all together, or stretch them all together. Hit return, there they are. And then what does it look like? Looks like this. So I like that, it looks a little weird that that's straight and the smile isn't straight, so let me do that again. Select all three, hold down shift this time, Command T, and now I'm just going to distort on all of them together. Tip one side up, tip one side just a little bit down, and then maybe move all of it just with my move tool. Okay, no, show that again. And tip it down. Now, did in distorting it, did I bow this side in just a tiny bit off of straight? Maybe. But again, I'm trying not to be perfectionist with this. Cool. Okay, what else do I need? I need ears. I don't know that my guides really help much. These teardrops don't quite work as ears. So what I'm going to do is build them. And I'm going to build them out of triangle tool. And I just need to build one, get the color right, turn the stroke off, and let's see, I can start with this color and then maybe make it just a little bit warmer, like that, so I can see what it's doing, and then I'll tuck it behind the head. Let's tilt it a little bit. And then, how am I going to round, round it out on this side, I think? I'm going to hit Command-T, and I'm going to try warping from here. That works pretty well, except it makes it a little too pointy. So I have to adjust that curve. And I always say it's like rolling dough or stretching silly putty. You have to kind of take it from multiple sides to get what you want. So I like what the top does now. Let's see if I can get the bottom to be a little bit more what I like. And remember these curve handles can be very helpful. These are called Bezier curves. That seems about right. 
I don't have quite as much space as I would like off to the side. So what can I do about that? I can enlarge my canvas size by going to image canvas size and width. I can make it eight and a half. As long as we're at least eight by 10 at 300, we're meeting the, the base requirements. I might even make it a little bit bigger if I want to make those ears bigger. So let's, let's go nine inches wide. Always centered. Now I'm going to take that ear. I can kind of move it out like this. And then how do I move it behind this shape? I simply drag it down. But there are a lot of layers. So a shortcut for that is Command Left Bracket. So it's right underneath Command Minus for zooming out. Command Left Bracket will move it down behind. Command Right Bracket will move layers up on top. Now that it's behind, maybe I can see a better at a different size. So I'll scale it up. Kind of squint. Do I like it? Yeah, I think that's maybe a little bit more effective for the emoji. I can always toggle it with Command Z back and forth. It's in my history. And maybe I decide, okay, somewhere in between those two, Command T, just shrink it down maybe a little bit. And maybe I'll hold down Shift so I can make it a little squatter. There it is. Okay, now move it up just a bit. Now I'm going to duplicate it. Command J. And then I'm going to right click. I'm going to do Command T. Right click within it. And instead of warping, distorting, I'm going to say flip horizontal. And that will give me the ear facing the other way. Hold down Shift. Bring it over. It will lock its placement. Hit return. So this is now what I've got. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing the edges of mine because it's so light colored. So sometimes it can be helpful to make a new background layer that's not filled in with white like we've done before. But instead we say edit fill and we're going to fill it with 50% gray. This is a, a nice way to kind of judge t-shirt designs. Like how does the t-shirt design look on white? How does it look on gray? How does it look on black? If it looks good on all three, then it will work on any colored t-shirt. You know, it will show up. So how can I make those ears stand apart from the head a little bit? What I'm going to do is duplicate the ear make it a darker shape. This is on a copy. So I'm just going to go to the color selector and go down a little bit. And then I'm going to hit Command T and I'm going to hold down uh, Option as I shrink. And that will shrink it towards the middle. And that gives me a little bit like a, uh, an ear fold. And then if I want to change that color, of course, I just double click on the inside. And I can brighten it up a little bit. It's so maybe about there. If I think that's right, I'm going to hit Command J, duplicate it, Command T, flip it horizontal, hold down Shift so it locks its axis, and move it over. But the problem is, there it is. It's locked. It even snaps in place. <clears throat> but it's underneath the ear. So how do I move it up? I can hit Command right bracket and move it up. Okay, what else do I need? I think the little blue collar might be nice. So how can I do that? I can take this ellipse, I can duplicate it, Command J, and then get a nice dark blue. Okay, then what I do is use the move tool and move it down. I can hold down shift so it locks its ax axis. And then I can use Command left bracket to move it down underneath. So now I've got a blue collar. If I want it to be a little bit smaller, I hit Command T. And instead of shrinking it from one side to the other, if I hold down Option, it will shrink from both sides. 